Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. And today's game up on the tabletop is Dumb Questions to Ask Your Friends by Big Potato Games. This is a game that plays three to eight players. It's a party game and it takes roughly 35 to 45 minutes to play. And in this game, you're going to find out answers to dumb questions that you probably don't care to know the answers to. Your friends are going to basically be announcing these answers and you're gonna try and figure out which dumb question it goes to. You'll be or basically organizing these questions as you flip them up to try and score the most points by making sure that the question that you thought it was goes to the farthest most likely end. And it'll play in rounds. If it's under six players, you're going to have two rounds a player, and if it's more than that, and then it's going to be one round a player. And whoever has the most points by the end of the game is the winner. The setup's easy, so is how to play, and then we'll come of course to my review. So the way the game is set up is pretty simple. You will take this board here, the main game board. It's going to have a most likely and least likely number from zero to four, and you'll just place it after folding it face up somewhere in the middle of the table. From there, you're gonna go ahead and take this box of cards and categories, but you're not gonna take anything out. Just leave them all in their categories. Famous people, objects, food, numbers, players, and animals. Set aside the rest, you will not need it. And then, well, you're ready to start playing. Place this little board in front of the player who you'd like to go first and start asking dumb questions. Playing the game is actually quite simple. What's going to happen is the person who has the board in front of them is going to choose a category. Maybe they'll choose the category numbers. And they're going to pull out five cards from the category in the box. Face down, do not look at them. From there, the main player is going to close their eyes. And one of the players on the opposite side is going to go ahead and reveal one of the cards. So while I have my eyes closed, they've revealed a card and they'll all look at the question, like how many Twinkies could you eat before you felt sick? And every player is going to think about how many Twinkies they'd eat before they got sick. From there, they're going to put the card back in and all together, or each player individually is going to say, five, six, two, three, four. And then after everybody has said what specific uh, number they would imagine a Twinkies, Twinkies would get them sick, the main player will take the cards that are all face down at this point and they'll open their eyes and they will shuffle these cards. Then they're going to reveal one card at a time and then they're going to read the cards on a scale of one to 10, how hot do you like your shower water? And it goes from zero to 10. And so I might think that uh, somebody picked oh, I don't know, 11 as far as Twinkies goes. And maybe I'd be like, maybe this is not the actual card uh, that they pick. So I could put this in like the one category because each number is not only the most likely to be the card that they reveal, but also uh, the more points you'll get if you successfully pick the right spot. And then it's how many coffees is too many coffees in a day. Maybe that one would be the one because you can never look at the next one until after you place the one that you see. Then you have the how many times have you gone skinny dipping? Maybe I think that would be on the lower end because if somebody picked a high number, or probably wouldn't make sense. And you're kind of guessing what you know about the players in the group. How many times did you order takeout last month? Maybe that would be a three. And then you come to Twinkies. Oh no, it was the last one. And so I'm left with two. From there, the players are going to reveal the answer and they'll say, oh, it was the Twinkies one. And so because I placed that on two, I would score two points. From there, I'll take these cards here and I'll go ahead and just discard them for now. And then in clockwise order, I will pass the game board to the next player. And they are then going to choose a category and it will rinse and repeat. Every single time the end of a round occurs, you'll check to see where you scored by placing the specific card that was picked. And after everybody has had either one or two rounds, depending on the number of players, you'll calculate the points and see who has the most. And of course, if you want, you can house rule this to play as many times as you would like. Just make sure that when you've played a game, you shuffle all the cards back in to their appropriate categories and start again asking dumb questions. Dumb Questions to Ask Your Friends is a pretty straightforward, silly party game all about trying to guess which question that your friends have picked and based on their answers, calculate which is the most likely question. There's a few hiccups and the first thing that is a hiccup is that when you get the cards back and after you've opened your eyes and shuffled these cards, you don't know what any of them are, but when you reveal them one at a time, 
you won't get to see the next one. You don't get to reveal all of them at once. Instead, you're just gonna go ahead and flip over one at a time and have to guess before moving on. So you'll go, is this the card that they picked the first one? And if so, do the answers make sense? And based on their answers and whether or not you believe it's the question, you'll place it in one of the categories. So whereas one sounds very, very likely to be the question, all of a sudden a new one pops up and that one seems even more likely based on the answers to be the question. And so you might wanna try and put it in a new spot, but once each answer is locked, it's locked. You can't place it anywhere else. And so there comes the challenge of this game. Additionally, depending on the silly questions that your friends are going to answer, you have to kind of calculate how they choose to answer these questions here. Uh, the only thing I would say is that make sure everybody's being honest. Don't. There's no lying in this game. There's no deception. The idea is to just try and guess based on the questions themselves because they all have similar aspects to them, like which player is the most likely to get arrested or which player could win a staring contest. And so it's all about the group for players. For animals, it's all about animals. Numbers is all about numbers, different types of food, different types of objects, and famous people. So no matter what, there are going to be answers that fit, of all my friends, each of these questions, which makes it an also fun aspect to the game and being able to choose your own category. This is actually a really, really solid party game. I love the idea of being able to kind of hear the silly questions and the silly answers my friends give and then being able to order them. It reminds me of some of those order games like the ranking history and order type games, but in this case, it's actually kind of customized to what your play group uh, is interested in. And the fact that you can play with as many players as you really want, the great thing about this game is you can house rule pretty much all of it. You can play with any number of players and here is as many number of answers as you want and have as many this thing go around the board as many times as you want. It's a great party game and it's very straightforward. If you're looking for a party game that plays up to eight players, it's all about being silly being honest and answering questions, and then trying to place those answers with the questions on the game board, and basically just kind of having fun, then this is gonna be a solid experience for you. I don't have a whole lot of negatives in regards to this game. It's kind of more of one of those games where if you enjoy this type of mechanic, you're going to enjoy this. Each of the questions do feel like they work with, and answers feel like they work with any of the question cards. The quality of the box is great. This is big potato here, so they always have wonderful quality. and. The the availability of the cards and being able to pull them out with the different category areas is very nice. It works. It works very, very well. And I've really liked all of their games. I think Big Potato is probably one of my favorite party game companies I've, I've had to work with and review their games. So this is also another home run. So if this is the game you're looking for and you like this type of style of party game, then definitely take a look at Dumb Questions to Ask Your Friends. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game, Dumb Questions to Ask Your Friends. If you're interested, there's a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and take a look at Big Potato Games and all their other party games, including of course this one, you can go ahead and pick them up. And if you're feeling generous and you'd like to, you can go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Subscribe and follow us here on YouTube, like, comment, and share this if you would like. Let me know if this is the type of party game that you would enjoy playing. For me, this is a big hit for our game group. It's really fun, straightforward, simple, and plays tons of players, which is always a great aspect to a party game and it's something that doesn't make you memorize or have to do any of this kind of stuff you can play this with a couple beers if you want you can play this with little kids if you want it's just all around fun thank you guys so much for watching and as always i look forward to asking you some dumb questions or having you ask dumb questions to your friends next time